morning. Today is Sunday morning. It's uh, the 17th day of Menachem Av. We, yesterday was Shabbos Nachamu. Friday was 15th of Av. Getting ready for the new year. From We, are, we can say already, Ksiva v'chasim we should all be blessed with a good year. A year that comes, a year of Hakil, finishing a year of Shemitah. So, and we are in the middle of chapter of, uh, letter five in the Geras HaKadosh, in a part of the Tanya of the Alter Rebbe's holy letters. And we started it on Friday. And yesterday's lesson was Shabbos, was of course not recorded, so, and I did not find the recording from last year because it was also Shabbos. So we're going to start from yesterday's last lesson, from Shabbos, the 16th day of Av. And then we're going to go to today's lesson, the 17th. So it's going to be a little longer here today. We're going to, and, and it is a deep concept, so we're going to try to explain it as much as possible. So it began this letter, again, we said this was one of the letters, a fundraising letter. But of course, the fundraising letters of the Alter Rebbe is a letter that explains what is the tzedakah and explains in the deepest Kabbalistic mystical meaning of what you do by giving tzedakah, by being acting kind and so on. And so he quoted from the Zoya that it says, but King David, he made himself a name. He made a name by giving tzedakah. And the Zoya explains what does it mean? He made a name that he created, he made God's name by acting of tzedakah. And that's what Rabbi Shimon Bayechai was crying and saying, who makes God's name? The one who gives, is acting charitable, the one who gives charity to the poor. So, so we need to understand, what does it mean? What does it mean making God's name? Why, how is it done through charity? So we asked the question, and then he started explaining and going into a whole different explanation. And that is, to understand what is God's name. What is God's name? And went into the explanation of, now we know we have the, the name of God is the Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. And Yud, K, Vav, K, we call it the Tetragrammaton. And we explained many times how this is basically the picture, the whole complete picture is in these four letters. The picture of the spiritual world, the picture in this world. The Yud, the Dat, represents the Chachma, the wisdom of Hashem. The He is the Bina, the understanding. The Vav is the emotions. And the He, the last He, is speech. We also explained on Friday that the Yud is father, the He is the mother. Vav is the son, and the He is the daughter. We gave a lengthy explanation. You can go back to Friday's uh, lesson to understand a little deeper what that means. Now, he, qu he quoted the statement that it says that God created the Olam Abba, the world to come, was created with the Yud, and this world, Olam Azeh, was created with the He. And then he went to explain a different concept, a different topic. The concept of Abba Yosad Barta. The father founded the daughter. And we explained that there is, what is the father? Father is the Chachma, like the dot that begins everything. And basically, we use example of human conditions to understand the spiritual imagery. Why? Because God created the human being in the image of God. So whatever we, to understand, for my flesh I can see God because that's the way God created us in his image. So we understanding the way it works by us, we can understand the metaphor, how it works up there. 
So just like by human being, you have the wisdom, there is the spark that comes, it's above your, your conscious. It's a subconscious thing that comes to you is a spark of wisdom, a flash of wisdom. And then it comes the Bina, is the developing of that wisdom. Then you have, it leads to emotions. And then it leads to action. But we found that there is some phenomenon that is a very strange phenomenon in the human condition. There is, this, there is something that comes that bypasses this whole system. And what is it? This is the speech. The speech, we explained that the way a person speaks when you utter the words, there's different letters that use different um, articulating tools. Some comes like the bet, the vav, mem, and pay. They come from the lips. But it's not that there is a message to your uh, to your brain, that the brain gives a message to your lips. I want you to move this way because I want to make the sound of a bet or a mem. It doesn't work like that. It's a subconscious thing. And we explained this is the difference between when you learn how to play an instrument, the piano or a violin, whatever you use, you use your finger, you train your finger to use in a certain way, and that's how you, you issue certain sounds. But the, 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 the speech is something which comes from a very deep place. It's called the, the Chachma Kadmus Aseichel, something which comes prior to the intellect. It is the subconscious that is in you that automatically get, makes you the utter those words, those letters. Okay, so we established. And that, again, that this is the speech represents the lowest of the person, the way the person relates to the outside. And in a metaphor, it refers to this physical world, the way Hashem created the whole system until it created this physical world. So we're saying that this was this is related directly with Abba, with the father, which is Chachma, which is pre the intellect. Okay, so that's what we established. And now, if that is the, going back to what we said, that this world is created with the hay, and the world to come is created with the yud. And we explained why. Because the world to come is a world where the yud is revealed, meaning you see the godliness as much as possible, as much as they, the levels that they have able to see. But the Yud represents the Chachman, represents the godliness. And that is in the next world, this is where it's seen, where you, you appreciate those, the, the Neshamas, the Malach, and the old gain knowledge and understanding and, and, and seeing this level of godliness to a certain extent. But in this world, is created with the hay. The hay represents after it goes down, has the hay has the shape of the a horizontal line, the vertical line, expanding of this and bringing down to a lower level. So Al Rebbe asked the question, if we're saying that the speech, which is the, represents the lowest level, comes directly, bypasses the whole system, then how can we say only that the other world, the next world is with the Yud, not this world? It seems like this world also connected, is connected and directly with Abba, with the Chachma. And it's all revealed in here, just like, just like in speech. It is, it, it is connected directly with the Chachma, with the intellect, with the will of the soul itself is expressed in the speech, in the movement of the lips and so on. So the Alter is going to explain this. And it's basically what he's going to say, what we learned yesterday, yesterday's lesson on Shabbos, is that everything has the inside and the outside. There is the Chomer and the Tzura. There is the shape. There is the shape of a thing. There is the matter and there is the form. 
just to, to give an example, to be able to understand this, um, everything has a matter and form. What do, we, what do we mean by matter and form? Uh, take, for example, a piece of, a, a table. You look at a table. You have, you have the matter and you have the form. What is the, the matter? Is it, It's a piece of wood. The form is what this table has, what the, this table, how it's made, how it's carved. You can have a table that is made in Italy and it costs thousands of dollars. And you can have a, a table that has much more matter and you buy it for a hundred dollars. It is the form that is the inside. And in speech, you can also have the idea, the concept of matter and form. You have the form of the letters and you have the matter of the letter. The matter of the letters, let, let's think for example, let's say, let's say if you speak two languages fluently, you speak Hebrew and you speak English. And you go to a lesson and you listen to a, a very fascinating lecture, very deep, very fascinating. Now, the speaker also speaks fluently Hebrew and English. And he's giving lectures in both languages and you speak both languages, and you listen to the lesson for an hour, and you come out from the lesson mesmerized. Now someone's gonna ask you, tell me, what language did the speaker speak? English or Hebrew? Not necessarily will you remember the language that he spoke. The language that he spoke is the matter of the letters. The message, that the, that the words carry is the form of the letters. So here too, in speech, you have the, 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 when we're talking about speech, you have the matter of the letters and you have the form of the letters. The form is more of a, 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 a spiritual revelation of what those letters represent. And the matter is just the physical uttering of the letters. You can have a baby repeating what you're saying, the same words what you're saying, and a child repeating it and not understanding the message. So the the for, the, the matter also has the this source. What is the source of the matter of the of the letters? This is the letter He. The letter He is the every letter uses the, the breath, the ha, ha. And this, this world compared to the spiritual world now using, the, the, using this example, using into the spiritual sense, you have this world and you have the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, godliness is seen. In this physical world, you have the matter, you have the godliness is concealed. What you see is the matter mainly. That, that is why the, the hay is the root of this physical world, because this is a world of matter. So let's see inside. We're going to understand it. Like I said, it's a deep concept, but we'll try to understand as much as possible. Again, this is yesterday's lesson from Shabbos, the 16th of Av, and then we'll continue to today's lesson. So it's the Alta Rebbe. However, the letters exist on planes of matter and form, which are also referred to as the internal aspect, the form, and their external aspect, the matter. And again, although the source is the primordial stage of the intellect and the will of the soul, as we explained on Friday, that, and we as explained earlier today also, that the speech, the way you speak, the way you form the letters 
is not something that you consciously do, it comes from subconscious that makes the words, the, the lips and the mouth order certain words. Even the, even the matter of the letters is like that. And this is but the form of the differentiation of the pronunciations of the 22 letters. The matter and body of the, of the formation, however, meaning the aspects of their externality, is the breath issuing from the heart. Now from the breath, from this breath is formed a simple sound which proceeds from the throat. The breath, and which is then divided into 22 kinds of enunciation an expression of the 22 letters. And this is using the five, um, the, tool, the tools of articulations. These divisions taking place through the five known organs of speech. These letters come from the throat. Gimel, Yud, Kaf, Kuf, Mechech, these letters come from the palate, gimel, cha, ka, <coughs> and so on. You have the, those letters from the lips, those letters from the tongue, those letters from the teeth. hevel hu ois hei os kalila. While the breath itself, which has its own sound independent of the letters being spoken, is uttered by the letter hei. The light letter, it's called the light letter, in as much as it lacks the substance of a complete letter. So that letter can be divided to any type of letter. The hey can the, is the breath that comes with every single letter. Which is the source of the matter and body of the letters before the division into 22. So the hay is thus the source of each letter's body. So the, like I said, you have the body of the letter and you have the form of the letter. So the hay is the source of the body of the letter. That is why this world, which is the externality of Hashem's light, is considered that this is, was, was created with the letter hay, which represents the ex externality of the letters. And that is why our sages of blessed memory said that this world was created by the hay. It was created by an external aspect or body of the supernal letters, whose source is the hay of the divine name. Okay. Now, the Alter Rebbe is asking another question. You say the letter, the hey, has the, the name of Hashem has two hey's, the yud, the hey, and the vav, and the hey. The, we explained that the hey, the last hey, represents this physical world. But the this, this statement that we quoted earlier that the world to come is created with the letter Yud and the world and this world is created, created with the letter He, there they're not talking about the second He, they're talking about the first He of the name of Hashem. First He, we know, represents something a higher level. The Yud is the Chachma, the He is the Bina. So that is what the Alter Rebbe is addressing now. I'm sorry, well, let's go back here. Now, though this lower hay, the letter hay, this is the lower hay, the letter hay, 
of the four letters of the name of God. Supernal speech is of the letter, the level of Malchus. As alluded in the verse, Malchus Cho, Malchus Kalailamin. Sorry, the different word. Bidvar, uh, the king's utterance reigns. Bidvar Melech Shilton. The hey is the source of speech. The hey that is the source of speech is thus the lower hey of the tetragrammaton, the letter which denotes, denotes the level of Malchus. Okay, so like we asked the question, that the letter, the last, the letter that hey that represents the Malchus, the lowest level, is the second hey. And yet our sages say that this world was created with the first hey. So that is the Alter Rebbe going to explain. While our sages of blessed memory expounded this. Now the world to come was created by the letter Yud, and this world was by the letter He. From their reading of the verse, for by Yud K, God created the world. Okay, so here we're talking about the first He, not the second He. So Daltreb is going to explain. Daltreb is going to explain basically that. The revelation, I mean, to understand this, we can ask a question before we, to, to understand it properly. I'm mean, saying that, that Hashem created the world with the Yud, the Hey, the Vav, and the Hey. So, there are, you notice that you have two of the same letters in the name. The alphabet has 22 letters. Why did it choose? the same letter representing two concepts. Why don't you choose another letter? And the answer is that the two He's really represent the same thing, but on different levels. The He represents the expansion of the Yud and the expansion of the Vav. So it, it, it's about revealing what is hidden. In the world, in the spiritual world, it is revealed a much, much higher thing. And in this world, it goes to the next level and revealed, it is a revelation, but a much lower level of revelation. But the idea of revelation is, is in both. That is why the hey is used, is used in both examples. So we'll see without the way Dal Tareb explains it. So it says, So this is because its source and beginning of its progress into a state of manifestation from the obscurity of the Yud. This is influenced and drawn forth from the level of the upper hay. So the upper hay begins the drawing and the revelation, which ultimately affects also this physical world. The obscurity of the Yud of the Chachma is the source of every manner of revelation, both of the world to come as well as this world. As this relates to the letters, it serves as the source of revelation, both for the, uh, for the form as well as for the matter of the letters. It is only that in the resulting revelation of the letters, the form of the letters and revelation of the world to come emanates from the letter Yud, from Chachma, from Chachma itself, while the revelation of the matter or external aspect of the letter emanates from the breath of the heart, from the letter He of the divine name. And what does the letter He represent? The form, of, and the form or shape of the letter He has dimensions of length and width, indicating the faculty of Bina. For the upper He of the divine name 
denotes the level of Bina. Bina is the understanding. Which is the expansion of the concealed intellect into a state of manifestation and apprehension, extending into Das. Das is the knowledge, the connection. And its diffusion, the diffusion of, of, of the flow of Bina, culminates in the heart. Thus it is written in the Kunim in the Zohar that Bina is the heart, and by means of it, the heart understands. And then, from there, issues the breath, the original manifestation of the body of the breath of the letter of speech, which becomes revealed from the concealment of the yud through the five organs of speech. Now you have a similar concept in the lower hay. The shape of the lower hay, which in its written form also has a dimension of length and width. This indicates the extension of God's blessed sovereignty, the sovereignty of all worlds, which extends upwards and downwards and in the four dimensions, directions. And all these directions extending and issuing from the letter, the letters of the word of God, as it is written in Ecclesiastics, the king's utterance reigns, as explained elsewhere. So the king, in order to be able to reign, he, need to, he needs to have a, a people, and the way he reigns is through speech. Now, of course, the Alter Rebbe says, um, when we're talking about speech, we're talking about utterance, we cannot uh, ascribe to God the, the shape and it's all a metaphor. So he says, As for the understanding somewhat, the concept of, and, and nature of the letters of speech in relation to divinity, Inasmuch as God has no form or of a body, nor of a soul, heaven forfend, says, This has been already been explained comprehensively yet, concisely, in Likuti Amorim part 2, chapter 11 and 12, see there, this is in the Shah Yichud Ve'amunah that we learned in the past. So this is yesterday's lesson, we're going to go now, to today's lesson. So in today's lesson for the 17th of Sunday, 17th of Benachamav, that Rebbe continues explaining why is it that this world was created with the letter Hey. We said that the higher world was created, the spiritual world, the Olam Abba was created with the Yud, and this world was created with the letter Hey. If we say that the letter Hey represents the expansion into details, so Al Tareb is going to ask that it seems like the, the, the spiritual world also has this kind of details, many details. So why do we say that specifically this world was created with the letter Hey? Continues Al Tareb, we now come to an exposition of Lama Amor Azal Shalom Azed Dafke Nivabrei of why our sage of blessed memory said that specifically this world was created by the letter Hey, and he goes on to say Ni Yadul Kol Chach Milayv. This is known to all the wise of heart. Ki Ribu Ya Elam Azay Chala Is Asher Ein Lo Yemispa. Concerning the multitude of worlds and a halot, 
palaces or chambers which are innumerable. As it is written, with reference to these countless worlds of uh, an echalot, do his regiments have a number? Suggesting that there is no number. There is infinite amount of regiment to God. And in, in each heichal and regiment comprise, they comp- comprises a finite but prodigious, prodigious number of angels as it is written, a thousand thousand serve him and a myriad of myriads stand before him. So in other words, we have the idea of infinite. Is there a number of his regiment? And yet in each, in each regiment, there is, talks about a thousand, thousand, a million, or myriads of myriads. That means it's a big number, but still it is a limited number. The same thing also. Likewise, incalculable, like the above hichalot and regiments, are the levels of the soul belonging to the five general categories of the soul, which are nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. Those are five levels of the soul. In wrongs to no end. There's also endless levels of this souls. And likewise, there are no, uh, numberless levels in all the worlds and echalot from among the multitude of echalot that exist in the worlds of Atzilut, Bria, and Yetzira. In Ekol Rebui Meilu, so of course, this is all we're talking about. He's not mentioning a see, a see or first to this physical world, but all of the other worlds, the spiritual worlds, yet is talking about multi, multitude of levels, infinite amount of levels, and yet within a, in, with a finite amount of chambers. In Ekol Ribui Meilu Ribui Yacharibu Yadin Kitz Mamesh, HaKol Nimshach Says all these hosts of created beings, all these hosts, then one multitude beyond another, that endless, literally endless numbers, everything, all issue and flow from the multitude. Multitude dishes. Forgive me here. Basically, we're saying the, 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 the endless amount of combinations that you have of the 22 letters of the word of the word of God, the word of God. In other words, we're saying from the combination of the 22 letters, you can make a combination which is endless, endless numbers of combinations. Which in turn divide into a further profusion of combinations, literally endless. It quotes us from the Sefer Yetzira that says, If you take five, uh, you have seven stones, the Sefer Yetzira talks about stones. And houses, stones is the letters, the houses is the words. When you take seven letters, seven stones, you build 5,040 houses. From here onward, from the sum, if you take eight, combination of eight, it goes already much bigger numbers, then it end goes already the millions and billions. Go ahead and calculate that which the mouth is unable to express. Okay? So in this way, the letters of the divine speech may be multiplied infinitely by various 
permutations and combinations, thus giving rise to a correspondingly infinite range of created beings. This we explained in length in Shah Yichud Vermuna. But if uh, but if the distinctions between all these beings lie merely in the ways in which their respective letters are combined, why are there also many and varying qualitative levels, one surpassing the other? This is the question that Al Rebbe now proceeds to address. Again, we're talking about the, the, in the spiritual levels, yes, there are multi, multitudes of combinations of, of created beings, which are, as a result, he said, of the com- many combinations of the letters, but yet there's also min- many different levels that are com- completely distant from one another. Though among the rungs and levels of the angels and souls, there are so many distinct kinds of, of qualitative as well as quantitative levels and rungs ad infinite infinitum. Gavoya al Gavoya, one surpassing the other. So where does that come from? This is the Alter Rebbe. This comes because it's not just an, an, the numerical, the, the different combinations of the letters. It's not just the combining the letters. There's also exchanging of the letters, which represent a different type of energy that comes as a result. In Akal Nimshach Lefichi Luki Yatsurufim Vatmuris Be'ad Bashkulu, these variations and levels exist because they all come into being according to permutations in the various letter combinations and letter substitutions of Aleph, Tav, Bet, Chin, and so on. As explained in Commission is Bad Periket Base, as explained in chapter 12 in Shah Yichud Vayambunah. Okay, so basically, we get to the point that all of this goes back to the question that, yes, it is created with all the different combinations of the letters, but still it, is, it should be coming also. The root of it is the letter He. And yet we say the, 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 all these spiritual levels are connected with the letter Yud. So the Alter Rebbe explains now because no matter what, ultimately, even though it is a many different combinations of creations of a multitude, endless amount of, of creations and angels and levels, but the common denominator between all of them is that they all have a understanding and seeing the godliness, the Yud, is revealed in them to one in one way or another. That's what Alter Rebbe concludes here. In a general way, they all possess wisdom and knowledge, and they know their Creator. And that is why, because their life force stems from the inwardness of the letters the form of the letters. Just like we said before about the speech and the human speech. If someone who grasps the letters, a baby can repeat and copy whatever you say, but they don't grasp the inwardness of the letter, the message. All of these higher spiritual worlds, they do grasp the inward, and the life comes from the inwardness of the letters. Which issues from the supreme chachma as mentioned above. We may therefore truly say that the beings encompassed by the general term of created the world to come were all created from the letter Yud. Why? Because their vitality stems from the inwardness and radiance of the letters of the divine speech. 
that derives from the Yud of the four-letter name of Hashem. So, hopefully, we understood a little bit of this concept, the idea of the world to come coming from, although being also created with all these thousands of levels, but yet the common denominator there is that it's Biyud Niva Elamaba was created with the Yud, Yud representing the Chachma, the wisdom of Hashem, because the, that represents the inwardness of the, of the letters that is revealed in the world, in the higher spiritual worlds. Which, and when talking about higher spiritual world, doesn't mean that it's some Disney if they take a space shuttle, because people who are in a high level, Sadikim, holy people, they can be right here and still connect to this higher spiritual world, talking about the concept. So this is the end of today's share. We shall continue, God willing, tomorrow. So please join us. Bezrat Hashem.